Hey everyone, Mike here. About two years ago, I uh, produced a video on how to airbrush with Sharpies. And it was a simple matter of uh, using a, a uh, can of compressed air and taking the extended nozzle or the hose off, stick it into the, into the can, and then hold the, um, hold the Sharpie and try to uh, line up the hose to the Sharpie and, and uh, airbrush whatever it is that you are wanting to airbrush. The problem was that um, it, it just would kind of move around, fluctuate a little bit, and affect the, uh, the, uh, the, the spray, the actual spray of the, uh, of the Sharpie. So what I want to do is show you something that's, that I came up with that's really easy that takes, this, uh, that takes this technique even closer to an actual airbrush. Now you can't, you can't replace airbrushing, especially when you do it with acrylics and you're using a real airbrush with those acrylics. Um, I have a Copic system. I have, um, you know, a Pache um, uh, airbrush where you do a gravity fed uh, uh, paints and, and that sort of thing. And, um, I, and, I've, and I've also used these mostly to try and help, um, help you guys uh, come up that are on really tight budgets, come up with a way to be, to be able to do some of the things that uh, some of the rest of us can do with tools that cost a little bit more than what you're willing to spend at the time. Um, and although this <clears throat> and although this did work uh, using the using it like this, you also had to um, you also had to have your fly or whatever it is you're painting, it had to be anchored in some some fashion. And one of the ways that um, that I did it or, or actually still do it is I'll mount it in these um, weighted uh, alligator clip uh, pieces that will hold the uh, fly pretty well uh, to where you can uh, to where you can airbrush it. And then um, what I, well actually what I want to do now is show you what what I've come up with. And we'll go ahead and make one real quick and you can see how hard it is. I mean it's really tough. I've got this. This is a flip flop. And the first thing that I want to do with this flip flop is to uh, make a hole that's going to be very close to the diameter, uh, uh, smaller than the diameter, because the because the uh, foam in the flip flop it will expand as you stick this in. In fact, you want that so that it move it'll go up through the hole and hold steady. And in fact, one of the things that you can do to make sure everything's aligned is you can you can uh, shift that tip a little bit right or left so that you can line up to the nozzle. So we'll, why don't we go ahead and make one of these real quick. And it's, it's, a, it's really, really simple. Um, I made these things up for myself. It's just a um, piece of uh, stainless steel uh, tubing. And I put it on my drill press and used a file and put this profile on it so that it, so that it will cut um, pretty well. And what I'm going to do let me uh, actually first, just so I'm not struggling here, let me uh, cut this down in size. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is to get this hole right here as close to the edge as we can, uh, but not so close that it's going to cause the, uh, to cause the foam to collapse. So I'd say probably about a about a quarter of an inch. Now <clears throat> you can see these little dotty things here, these little tread marks on the uh, flip flop. I think what I want to try and do is get the um, get that little, little tube right in the center of one of the dots, so that I have an alignment right there. And then as I'm pushing down, I will rotate, twist back and forth until I get all the way through and then pop it up and then I've got myself a little plug which by the way that little plug you can use to make uh, small poppers out of. Alright so now we've got the hole made that will hold the um, 
that will hold the Sharpie, and it, it really it holds it really nice. And the, 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 the nice thing about this is, with the Sharpie, is you can move it in and you can move it out, whatever you need to do for the uh, step, the, uh, one of the final steps that we're going to make on making this, um, this little holder. So what I want to do now is try and, again, this distance here, to the hole. I want to try and keep it the same over here. I used my X-Acto knife a minute ago and it's a little bit dull. I'm going to use this um, utility knife. It's got a little better blade on it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that right there off. And then I'm going to turn it around because I want to be able to see. If I try to cut on this side if I try to cut it like this, I've got the hole covered up and I cannot get the alignment to where I want uh, right here. So I'm going to line it up the best that I can and make that cut. Okay, so now a tr the, uh, the part that you're going to want to do, and this is uh, somewhat important, is to make sure that you put a hole that is about at a 45 degree angle right here, somewhere around, 40. It, it can be a little more, a little bit less, it, I mean it doesn't, it's not overly critical, but I, I, I found that 45 degrees is just about, uh, just about right. So what we want to do is get that hole started at about 3 eighths of an inch back from the uh, edge of this hole here. So we'll go back one, two, three, right there. And that dot is a little bit offset in that direction. It looks to me, it looks to me like if I stay in the center of this, of this groove right here, I'm going to be fine. So now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take an old bodkin and I'm going to heat it up so that it'll pass through this foam uh, more controllably and we can make that uh, that slanted hole and you want to try and keep control of the um, of your uh, needle as you run it down through there as much as possible because you want it as straight you want it as straight as possible and at the angle that you want that you're wanting as as as, uh, as close as possible. So all we need to do is just run this down at about a 45, and take it all the way through, just like that. It was that easy. That's the part that uh, where the nozzle will come out and hit the tip of your um, of your sharpie. So now this was the 3 8 inch side, which now you can see it comes back out. It's about three quarters of an inch right here, from from there to there. That's the that's the angle that we got out of it. So what I'm going to want to do now is cut from that larger point because if I try to cut here, I'm going to cut my I'm going to cut my uh, the, the channel out, and we don't we don't want to do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and take again about the same distance here and go back just like this and we'll cut cut that off just like that and that's what you're going to end up with is this uh, block of, um, of foam and you can you can clean it up you know make it straighter and uh, you know take your time and I'm, I'm just throwing this together as quick as possible just to show you how how easy it really is to, to make this thing so we've got our, our can of uh, air here and I pulled it off to show the old style of, um, of cutting, but now what we want to do, we do not need this long of a, um, of, a, of a piece of tubing. It only needs to be about three inches long, and this one here is about five. So we're going to go ahead and, and cut off about three inches of this thing. And you might go ahead and hang on to this because you can use it for um, tube flies if you do that and I'm going to do a video here in the near future on um, tube fly tube fly flies materials and um, where you can get them and how you can improvise and that sort of thing so now what I want to do is 
take this three inch nozzle and put it in the, uh, the can of air and push it in so it seats. Then we take the foam block that we made and you start it on the far end and it runs up through the foam and meets the, the larger hole. And then we want to take our Sharpie and run it through this hole right here. So now what we're going to want to do is meet the red tubing right to the uh, right to the Sharpie. And you might have to move the Sharpie out a little bit, but that right there is about what you're looking for. That right there. That's the angle and that's the distance that you want on uh, on your setup there. There we go. And now what we all we need to do is is airbrush whatever it is that you're going to collar. Now, one thing I I did right here is I I ran it back and forth and and did a continuous burn on it or continuous blow. And what you want to do though is more um, controlled short bursts. Because one, one of the things that these um, Sharpies do, as well as the Copic pens, if you put it on a continuous run, it's, these are, these are um, alcohol-based inks. The alcohol is going to dry up, and it will take a few minutes for the uh, liquid down inside the uh, chamber that's holding whatever liquid the uh, Sharpie is using, which Sharpie is also a, uh, a, a, a alcohol-based uh, ink. And what it and this wick this is a wick the tip is a wick it goes down in there it takes a few minutes for that um, for, for that ink to saturate back up to the tip to where you can go ahead and start uh, painting again it just takes a few minutes so if you do short bursts okay like so then you can color in what you know whatever and however you want to it's it's all technique it's going to take a little bit of time to play around with but you again uh, do it in short bursts get your uh, tips lined up the uh, the tip of the pen and the tip of the tube and the other thing is well what's nice about this one is if you're right-handed the pins on this side if you're left-handed you just flip it over and you got you, now you're left-handed so it, it's reversible, which is pretty awesome. Um, and the other thing is with the uh, canned air, you'll see on here that it says uh, do not shake. Th this is a, um, a CO2 filled uh, can of air. And what happens is when you uh, expel the compressed air, the, the uh, container will get really cold and it loses its prope propellant properties until it warms back up again. It's no big deal. It'll still work. You just got to wait until, until it uh, warms back up. But anyway, that is, um, in my book, <laughs> that is a pretty cool thing to be able to do uh, when you want to airbrush your uh, flies or if you're doing any kind of other, you know, artwork that requires a, um, you know, an airbrush system but you don't have the money uh, for one. You can get a $3 can, or maybe even less than that, it might be $2, two, two or $3 can of compressed air, and you can use the existing tube that comes with the can, cut it down short, take a flip-flop that you can get for $0.99 cents at Walmart, and cut it down to this uh, size block. But you don't cut it down and then put your hole in because you, you won't be able to get it in as symmetrically um, as you will be able to if you would just go ahead and do the hole first getting as close to the outside edge as possible and then get it cl and then then you will move um, move to the side and cut the these here that that will allow you to get this hole more dead center on your block and then the other thing you want to do is you know find the center of this and maybe strike a line down through through there this is the uh, 3 8 inch side then you come three eighths of an inch from this side of the hole here, right here. Uh, let's see if we can do it this way. 
take it from this side of the hole right here and then three eighths of an inch to, to, and mark it with a uh, dot from your marker and then you're going to heat your needle up and run it down through you want to try and keep it to where you're steady and you can run it straight down through at that 45 degree angle pull it out and then if you if you use a bodkin needle it's all, it's a perfect size to make sure that the um, that your red nozzle your hose that comes with the uh, with the can that goes into the nozzle so that you can get it like that and then you can stick whatever collar of uh, sharpie you want in there and boom you've got yourself a an airbrush system it really works well um, I, I've, I've got a number of uh, videos that I have done and um, I'm constantly thinking about easier ways to do it and and um, I, I, I it's kind of hard for me not to do a video and 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 it's showing something that is in its um, you know development stages because I, I just want to share it um, it, it just takes it just takes time to refine things to the point where you can do something as simple as a small block to hold things into place so that you can do an airbrush just like this. One of the other things that I've gotten, I don't really want to ramble here on all the projects that I'm doing, but um, you know, I, th this was a couple of years ago when I first introduced the uh, airbrushing with Sharpies. Now you can airbrush with Sharpies with a block that's going to hold the Sharpie in place. It's going to give your hand free so that you can actually airbrush, you know, holding whatever it is that you're that you're painting. Um, but uh, the uh, the other thing that I, I've been working on to try and um, you know perfect, uh, just like this, it just takes time to perfect things. You got to constantly think about it. You're going to fail. No big about no big deal about failing because failure is just a learning process. And you know if you fail, then you learn. You learn that your failure failure didn't work. And you continue on and you try and figure out what it is that will make something work. And what I'm getting at here is I've been wanting to make a stand up paddleboard uh, to to fly fish off of a, a platform and um, I, I could go buy one but but why do that when you can have fun making your own stuff I mean I, for me that's part of the deal is just making your own stuff but anyway yeah I got a, a stand-up paddleboard that you can make um, hopefully you'll be able to do it and, and the reason why it's taken so long for me to get that video out there is I, I'm trying to do everything like this to where you can make these things with just standard tools. I mean, I've got a really nice wood shop downstairs. And I mean, I can do just about anything, but I wanna, I wanna be able to do, I wanna be able to develop a way that you can do the same thing without spending a lot of money on tools that you'll maybe use one time. That's the part of the frugal fly rotter. I hope you got something out of this video. Actually, I did because I just found this. I just 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 found out how to do this this morning, and I uh, went out and bought a couple of uh, fresh cans of uh, compressed air to show it to you and share it with you. And if you like this, please consider subscribing. Just hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell so that when I do put a video up, you'll be able to see it. I'm I'm okay with uh, you know uh, constructive criticism, but the thing that I've always had a problem with, and I know people have meltdowns is when you have a very negative uh, comment and it doesn't have anything to do with what it is that, that, that I did anyway. So if you're positive and constructive in your criticism, you've got ideas to be able to expand on whatever it is that I come up with, please share it. I really want to hear what you think about what I've come up with or I really wouldn't mind hearing if you found a better way. Because it's not my way or the highway, it's just a way that I came up with uh, to play around, and this happens to be playing around with airbrushes, sharpies, to color your uh, poppers and flies. Anyway, this is Mike. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.